Parmi nous, euh, Matt Kennard, qui est un journaliste euh, britannique qui a énormément travaillé sur le, sur le dossier Assange. Il est euh, à Paris pour euh, quelques interventions au sujet de, de son dernier livre, Silent Crew, qui euh, qu a coécrit avec Claire Provo. Le livre sortira en français euh, dans, quelques, dans quelques mois. Et donc, étant donné le, 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 tous les articles qu'il a écrits sur l'affaire Assange, y compris des, des, enfin, des, des révélations euh, très importantes, notamment sur le, les tractations qui ont eu lieu entre le Royaume-Uni et l'Équateur pour livrer euh, une Assange. Ben, C'est intéressant de lui, de lui céder la parole. Euh, Matt Kennard, qui est journaliste d'investigation et qui travaille particulièrement pour le site internet Declassified UK. Thank you, Laura. Uh, okay, first of all, it's, um, it's great to be here and see so many people uh, in Paris. Um, the French movement for Assange is, is huge and inspiring. And of course, it is it's extremely important international solidarity for this case because the governments involved, they don't want to move, but they need to be made to move. And the only way we can make them move is people power, people pressure. Um, and of course, this case goes to the heart of everything that we value in, in our societies, freedom, free press, the ability, free speech, everything we value, our freedom to, to uh, express ourselves and contradict what the government says, what corporations tell us, is all uh, at stake in this case. Because Julian Assange is being persecuted because he let us peer behind the curtain. He let us see how the people who act in our name actually operate and not the propaganda we get in the media. And it's important to be outside the Australian embassy because We've been covering the British role in the persecution of Julian Assange. There's obviously the United States role in the persecution of Julian Assange. They are not going to give up. The only people that can save Julian Assange, in my opinion, are the Australians, because he's an Australian citizen. They should be protecting him. And the United States and Britain are launching their new war against China through Australia. So Australia has leverage that they can use to demand Assange's release. They can say, if you're going to use us as a launch pad to attack China and launch a new Cold War, then you should give us back our citizen who you are persecuting for revealing your crimes. And I'll just talk a bit about the role of Britain because that's where I'm cu I come from and that's where what a lot of the work I've been doing has been on. And how Julian Assange has been treated in Britain, he, he is clearly a political prisoner. That's not just uh, rhetoric, that's not hyperbole. He is a political prisoner. He has been abused by the political system and the judicial system in Britain has been captured by the political system and the government. Uh, there's countless examples of this, but the government was intimately involved in the operation to get Assange out of the embassy where he had legitimate asylum from the Ecuadorian government. It's put him in a high security prison for no reason. He's never been charged with a violent offence. Delmarsh is one of the worst prisons in, uh, in, in Britain, the conditions and the, the level of security. There's absolutely no reason that someone who has never been charged with a violent offence should be in there. He's in there with terrorists and paedophiles and rapists. It's outrageous. But Britain shows no willingness to follow due process or to follow the general rules of law or um, uh, extradition proceedings in this case. Assange is operating a level above uh, uh, what we commonly understand about how our society works. So, as I say, we need to keep the international solidarity moving because it's France is big. All over Europe, people understand this. Latin America, Lula, the president of Brazil speaks about this, the president of um, uh, Mexico. Bolivia, Mexico. People who understand how the world works and understand what is at stake in this case. They are speaking out. It's only the people in the imperial capitals of Washington and London that they, they don't want to talk about it. The other thing is, obviously, at this point, it's not looking good. Uh, the, 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 the process in London has nearly reached this conclusion. The, the final decision will be made soon. Um, there's not much hope that it will go in Julian Assange's favour. And there is a, uh, obviously, a, it's painful uh, and there is a, it, it's depressing, but people need to keep activism up because the fact that, they, that there's been this activism around the world for years now and this pressure has been brought by governments, by people on the ground, has made it much more difficult for the British and the Americans to do what they wanted to do, which was just quietly take him off and no one talk about it.
that's what they want. And in fact, the media in the UK and to a degree in the United States doesn't cover it at all because they're under the control of those governments. But the people power and the movement globally has put a lot of pressure on them. They are, we've made it difficult for them. Everyone here, everyone around the world has put, and we need to keep that pressure up because even if he goes to the United States, what happens to him is also going to be uh, 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 decided based on the pressure that's going to build on the United States at that point as well, because it's a public relations disaster. Julian Assange is a journalist who exposed war crimes, and he's been persecuted, and they're trying to kill him or put him in prison for the rest of his life for the crime of practicing good journalism. That is a outrage, and people around the world can see it, and people around the world can see that it completely contradicts how the United States and Britain present themselves. They present themselves as um, uh, uh, spreaders of freedom and democracy, but they're persecuting the journalists that did more work to expose war crimes than any other journalist probably in history. So we need to keep up the pressure and don't get disconsolate. Understand that it's having an impact. It's having, even if we're losing in the courtroom, uh, we are winning the battle of, uh, 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 of public opinion. Um, and we need to continue the fight uh, and this is a great place to start and, and focus on the Australians because these are the people that have really dropped the ball. I, I interviewed last year Rafael Correa, the president of Ecuador from 2007 to 2017. He was the president and his government gave asylum to Assange in London and he said to me, I cannot understand how the Australian government aren't doing more for their citizens. We gave him an asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, he wasn't even our citizen. But they did it because they believe in the free press and they wanted to protect him from persecution by the US government. He said, why is the Australian government not helping their own citizen? He, for him, it made no sense, and it makes no sense. The only answer is the Australians are under the control of the Americans and they need to be embarrassed and shamed until they do the right thing and represent their citizen and say, we won't take it, we won't take orders from you until you give our citizen back. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. I have to say that this is the journalist de Julien Assange.